In this session, we're going to look at how we can convert two-dimensional geometry into three-dimensional solids. I recently had an opportunity to teach an AutoCAD class, and during the session, some of the students were asking how difficult it was to go from 2D to 3D. So as an example, I grabbed one of the coffee mugs from the back of the room and took some measurements and drew a sectional view and a top view of the object just to show them how we could take that two-dimensional line work and convert it into a 3D model. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to share the workflow. On my screen, I have some geometry that represents a top view and a section view of the mug. If I zoom in, you can see this geometry right here represents the shape of the handle or the path of the handle. And then right here I have some geometry that represents the section of the handle geometry. To convert this into a solid, I'm going to split my screen. I'll do that by opening the in-canvas menu here on the left. I'll come down and choose viewport configuration list and I'll choose two vertical. This splits my screen and allows me to view my part from multiple locations in space. I'm going to start by working on the handle here, so I'll zoom in on the handle using this view on the left, and then I will zoom in on the same area here on the right. Let's change the view on the right to a 3D view. I'll do that by holding my shift key and the mouse wheel. We'll orbit this around, and then I'll zoom in a little bit closer. I would also like to change my visual style. Let me open this up, and I'll flip this from 2D wireframe to conceptual. By doing that, when I create solid geometry, that geometry will reflect light, and it will look solid here in this view on the right. Also, by changing this visual style to something other than 2D wireframe, it will give me additional gizmos. If I want to adjust the location of a part, I could select it. In this case, I've got a rotational gizmo. If I right-click, I could also use the gizmo to move the object. Let me right-click again. I could use this gizmo to scale it. Let me press Escape. So where does this come in handy in this case? Well, I would like to take this section and stand it up such that it's more naturally positioned where I'd like it to be when I sweep it around this shape. So. Let me select the part. I will then right click on the gizmo and I'll choose rotate. And then I will click this green ribbon. This allows me to rotate that section in space. I'm going to come down and lock my ortho. I mean, I could type in a rotation angle, but you can see how quickly I can stand this up just by pulling that up with my ortho locked and I'll click. Let's press escape. Now let's come over to this view on the left. I would like to sweep that section around this path. Currently this path represents a bunch of individual objects, so I'd like to join these together first. I'll do that by going to the Modify panel. I'll come down and choose Join, and then I'll create a nice crossing window along these, and I'll press Enter. Let's come down to the command line. We can see five objects converted to one polyline. If you see a certain number of objects converted to two or more polylines, you'll want to run the Join command again to make sure that you've gotten them all. In this case, I've got a nice path. That's perfect. Let me come back over to this view on the right. To create the shape of the handle, I'm going to use the sweep command. And I could just type in sweep, but let's load the workspace for that. I'm going to come up, open the workspace menu. We'll change this from Civil 3D to 3D modeling. So obviously I'm using Civil 3D in this case, but really what we're working on here is traditional AutoCAD tools. So the techniques and the workflows we see here will work in any AutoCAD-based product. I'm going to close this tool space. I don't need that one. And then to launch the sweep command, here on the Home tab, I'll open this menu underneath Extrude, and I'll choose Sweep. What do I want to sweep? I'd like to sweep this section. Enter. Where's my path? Let me choose the path right there. There we go. If I hold my Shift key in the mouse wheel, we can orbit this, and we can see that handle's been created. Let me click in this view on the left. Here, I'm going to create the shape of the mug. I'm going to use a command called Revolve in this case. In fact, I've already got the geometry here in my section view. I'm going to use half of this geometry, just one side of this green line. Just imagine if we had a nice closed shape over here and we were to spin it around an axis represented by this green line. That would create the shape of the mug. So let's start, because this is individual geometry here, we'll join this together. Once again, I'll go to the Modify panel and I'll choose Join. And I don't have to be too specific here. I'm going to use a crossing window. It doesn't matter if I grab extra stuff. I can't join line work to a solid, so let me press Enter. There we go. 16 objects converted to one polyline. I can see there's my polyline. Now I would like to close this. I want it to be a closed object before I revolve it. A quick way to close the object, I can select the polyline. I'll press Control-1 to bring up my Properties palette. and Let me drag this all the way to the bottom. I'll change the Closed property here to Yes. When I'm finished, I'll close the Properties palette, and then if I zoom in, we can see that it's now a closed object. Let me pan this over, and I'll click in this view on the right, and we'll pan this over over here as well. Then we'll come back to the left. To revolve this, I'm going to come back up to the Modeling panel. I'll open the same menu we were in before, and this time I'll choose Revolve. I'll select that closed shape we just made, and I'll press Enter. Now I have to define the axis of revolution. 
That's going to be defined by the endpoint here of the green line and then the endpoint here at the other side. As I move my cursor, you can see how that revolve is taking place. At this point, all I have to do is enter my angle of revolution. We can see right here by default that's 360, which is perfect. I'm going to press Enter to accept that value. There we go. That looks good. If I hold my Shift key in the mouse wheel, we can orbit that around and take a look. Very nice. Let me click back here on the left and we'll zoom in. Right here we can see that the handle penetrates the mug along this edge. I would like to fuse these objects together. I'm going to do that using a command called Union. Here in the Solid Editing panel, I'll come up and launch Union. I will then select the handle and the mug, and I'll press Enter. And any place where they have overlapping solids, those solids will be consumed by the overall object, and these two objects become one large solid model. Once again, we'll come back over to the right. Let me zoom in. Now, I'm being a little picky here. If we look at the actual mug, we can see that we don't have a sharp edge right here. It's got a fillet on it. To create a fillet on my solid, I will use the traditional AutoCAD fillet command. If I come up to the Modify panel, I can launch Fillet, and then I will click to select the edge. I can then enter my desired radius. Now, I drew this mug using centimeters. I'd like my fillet to be a radius of one millimeter, so the default here is perfect, 0.1. Let me press enter to accept that, and I would like that fillet to go all the way around the edge. Now I could pick all of those edges individually, or if I come down and choose chain, I could then select that edge again, and if I orbit this around, we'll see how easy this is, we'll spin this around, you can see how that edge went all the way around the handle and then joined back up on the other side. So really quick way to grab that edge. Now that everything's selected, I'll press enter, you can see there's my fillet. Let's go ahead and do that to the other side. I'll tap my spacebar to go back into the fillet command. I'll select the edge. I'll accept the radius. I'll choose chain. And then I'll select that edge again to go all the way around. And I'll press enter. There we go. At this point, I really don't need the top view or this, uh, this view here on the left. So I'm going to click to put my focus on the right. And then I'll open the in canvas menu here on the far left side. And we'll change the viewport configuration to single. This gives me a nice single viewport. Now, I'd like to stand the cup up. Knowing what we know now, since I'm not using the 2D wireframe visual style, this is very easy. I can simply select the mug, and then I can use a gizmo to stand it up. Rotate is the last one that we used. I'm going to use the red ribbon this time. Let me click that ribbon, and since my ortho is locked, I can just pull right up here and click. So now that cup is oriented vertically in space, which is perfect. Now it is penetrating my drafting plane just a little bit. Just for a second here, I'm going to turn on some additional layers. Let me open the Layers panel, and then I'll open the Layer Control. I apologize, this is creeping off screen a little bit. Let me turn on the Plate layer, and then I'll turn on the Table layer. I've created some additional geometry in here. The Table, if I zoom out, this is just a circle that was converted into a region to represent a table. And then this saucer, or plate, was created using the Revolve command, much like we created the shape of the mug. I would like to place the mug on top of the saucer. So, to make this a little bit easier, I'll change the visual style from conceptual to x-ray. This allows me to see through everything. To move the cup, I'm going to use the traditional move command. I'll just launch move, and I'll select the cup, enter. Now, where do I want to pick it up from? I'll hold the shift key and the mouse wheel. We'll orbit this around. I want to pick it up from the center of the bottom. These two edges right here represent the face of the cup that sits on the table. So let me shift right click. I want to pick it up from the center of either of these circles. We can select object snaps on our solids. There we go. I'm holding it from the center of the bottom. Let me hold my shift key and my mouse wheel. We'll orbit this around. And I'm going to turn off my ortho here momentarily. I would like to place this to the center of the top of the saucer. So shift right click, we're going to place this to the center and right along that edge, that circle right there represents the center of the top of the saucer. Let me click to place that, looks good. Let's change the visual style, we'll flip this back to conceptual for a second. There we go, looks like we got it. So at this point I'm going to create a, just a quick rendering. I've already applied some materials to my table and the saucer. Let's apply a material to the cup here for a second. Before I do that, I will change my visual style to realistic so we can see the materials. So you can kind of see the wood grain there on the table. I am going to go to the Visualize tab just for a second. And if I click the icon right here, I can bring up the Materials Browser. And here you can see the materials that I've brought into the drawing. I'm just going to take this ice white porcelain material, and I'll drag that from the browser, and I'll drop it on the cup. That way the cup and the saucer are made from the same material. Let me close the browser, and then I'm going to load a view that I created earlier. 
Let me open up the View tab, and from here I will go to Views, and I'll select my Render View, and then we'll go back to Visualize, and I'll come over and click the Teapot to do a quick render. As you can see, it's not too difficult to go from 2D geometry into a 3D solid model. Going to 3D is just taking one more step. Now, even though the example we saw here isn't a civil engineering infrastructure example, the workflow would be the same to create any 3D solid object. The nice thing is, once you create a 3D model, you can easily move it into other applications like InfraWorks or Navisworks. Would you like to explore additional Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by using the URL listed below.